Engineer 775 on site here in South Carolina. Working with Gain Solar and the guys we just got here right after Hurricane Matthew. So it's a beautiful, beautiful day. And uh, we're putting uh, 60 325 watt panels on this roof. And we're just doing a layout now. We're going to be using snap and rack um, mounting, racking hardware. And it's got a metal roof with some Z purlins underneath, so we just want to make sure we do a good layout. We only have one obstruction. He's got a solar hot water heater. It's over here, we're going to make sure we're we're good. We don't want to be right on the edge of this roof or just wind loads and any uplift there. We want to protect the array as much as possible. Hurricane is a good reminder of that. So, all right, we're going to get to work here and uh, we'll be showing you some of the, the components as we go. So stay tuned. All right, Johnny Valentine, tell us about the snap and rack roof, roof base. Well, this is the snap and rack metal roof base. Awesome. And uh, it's got a gasket here and it's got a gasket here. Yeah, you got a base on it? Two EDPM gaskets in so, these. Yep, yep, metal roof zoom base, in on it. specifically designed for metal buildings. Kind of like a red steel building with a Z purlin. That's what so we have on. That's the actual base that gets uh, screwed down where the Z purlin is. And then after you get your base down, you just come back and tighten the base up. It's got another gasket in there. And then the top of the base is a uh, half inch stud. So once that's on there, you can pretty much go to anything. Now, I mean, this base you can use it for satellite dishes. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. So we're using a uh, special, special self-tapping screw. It's got fine threads. It's got the DP5 head. Drills up to 0.5 inches of steel. Oh, I like that. It's a nice screw. It's got a uh, 5 16 head on it. Sweet. And uh, she's going in fast. She's going in tight. And don't get no easier than this on a metal roof. This is a, this is way different than the way when we started out, out doing this. We used to cut aluminum plates and wrap butyl tape around it, and then put the aluminum plate underneath the L foot and go into blocking on a metal barn. Ridiculous. Take forever. Snapping rack. They cut us a break through a man of bone. Through a soul man of bone. <laughs> so I'm just gonna I'm going through now and just final torquing. Everything is. Snugging it tight. And then they don't tell you have to do it. Like Just to a backup. You need a sealant on there. Here's a pro tip for you. Spit on your finger. Spit on your finger. And tool B. And you keep get that, get it down into the cracks. And that's how we do it. Right there. Snap and rack metal roof base. Very good product. All right. We have. Uh... What do we have we got, on this one? We got 20, almost 20 kW. No, I mean so roof bases. We got three per um, 162 inch rail. Yeah, we got this is this is down in down in that low country in South Carolina. That's not a lake. That's that's on Hurricane Matthew. Yeah, that is just the that is not a pond out there. That is just what's left over after the hurricane flooding out a low area on their property. Lots of trees down. Customers run. He's running. Customer said he's running. Meals back and forth to old people and uh, generators to all his neighbors. Yeah, so he's, this... he, he's a he's a busy customer doing what peppers do when they're taking care of other people. Other this people. is why we do it. Yep. So, uh, all right, we'll be back. Okay, end of day one. All the snap and rack mounting is on the roof and we've pre-wired one of the strings. So looking good, got all the end caps on. Dresses it up a little bit, makes it nice. So we did good. 
we are waiting on our solar panel delivery tomorrow. We got lots of trenching, inverter mounting, and electrical work to do. So no lack of work to do on this uh, Tony KW 60 panel job. So anyway, you can see the shades on it. It's uh, time to go get some food. Okay, doing good. The crew is ready to eat. Okay, the end of day two. We've got three SMA TL inverters mounted. These are the 6,000 watt inverters. And we're gonna be putting some wiring troughs underneath them with a sub panel, 200 amp sub panel. And this will feed to the house. Okay, we have trenched from the grid tie inverters all the way to the house. We tore through the usual water lines, irrigation lines. Here come those two Amish guys. Hey, Amish dudes, what are we doing? Is it time to quit yet? All right, our solar panels finally showed up. We had an excuse that of the storm from the storm. We kept hearing that they were going to be delayed, but they're coming from Oregon. So, anyway, these are high-quality Solar World panels. 60 of them going up, 325 watt, made in the USA. And uh, we're very thankful to the homeowner who had this military forklift. Um, we've been using this John Deere tractor. It is cool when you have a, a customer that just trusts you to use their equipment. So that's a blessing, I want to tell you. So we're very thankful to have the forklift. So this guy has gone to the military sales and picked up all sorts of goodies. $4,000 for that forklift. It's a diesel, runs great. Anyway, I'm a little sidetracked because I need one of those for my shop. But anyhow, we're working on solar and we're gonna dress these panels and start putting them up. And we're using the snap and rack system again, so top notch. All right, we're actually, this is the, towards the end of day three, we've been, had to do so much plumbing and trenching work. I didn't show you that because it's pretty boring. But uh, now we're getting ready and it's the end of the day. We just figured, well, we've got some, oh, well, it's cool. Let's get some panels going. And tomorrow we'll knock this whole array out. All right, we're finishing up here day three, getting the uh, inverters, all the EMT and these Myers hubs, make sure we're waterproof going into our our gutters, even though these are going to be nice and protected under this roof, um, you still have to by code have my everything. So, all right, and then we're going to have the sub panel is going to be fed by these. Each inverter is going to go to a, 30, a 40 amp breaker, and then the grid is the, the main the the, one, the main uh, three runs of one out copper are going to go to the house. I'm going to run them down. It's 590 feet to the house. Another shot for you. This is the end of day three. We got our panel up 19.5 kW array. There'll be 60 beautiful monochrome Solar World panels going up. Just finishing up string number two. There'll be six strings of 10 panels run into these neat little junction boxes with DIN rails, and and down they'll go through these LBs that Mr. Larry's working on. And that'll bring the power down to the inverters. It's a beautiful spot up here. That's the beauty of our job. We get to go to some really nice places. Just hang out and watch these guys work hard. And solve puzzles. Hey boss, what you got there? Big Boss's solar panel delivery service. Pitch roof. Johnny V. This is the Big Boss's pitch roof solar delivery service. We nice. go up to 45 degree angle on this. We don't, have we don't go far. Now. We don't go steeper. We don't go any 1412s. 45 degrees and we're going to charge time and a half. Time and a half when we go over to 1212 uh, pitch. Okay, day four. We have got um, the pipes in. We're about to get the wire to pull the wire. 600 foot run. And we get to tie into this monster. We've never worked in an 800 amp service before. This might be look uh, easy to you, but it's scary. 
The one good thing is the power's been out here all week, and so we're not working on anything live, and we've got all the breakers off. So anyway, and we're fortunate we got an empty breaker that we can use to tie in after we tie into our disconnect. So the solar on the barn roof, which is 600 feet away, is coming to this disconnect, and will be fed back through here, and then a net meter will be put on so we can send uh, 20 kilowatts uh, back to the back to the local electric company and then we are working on a future project to that's why we did a larger gutter we're going to put a transfer switch here and that will allow um, the customer to switch between the net meter and be able to actually um, the third pipe is to run a sunny island or something bigger um, for a battery backup system he's got a bunch of iron edisons so we're working on that as a future project, but we're, the goal today and tomorrow is to get the grid tie done. Okay, I've never done a wire pull this big. Take that like that. We got wire. Now go about and wire. Go about like to the trees or wire. so, and then turn and come back. Make a so big. It's move. all hands on deck for a big wire pull. We've got so many circuits. We're just running wire. It's my first pull box. Well, these are the next two. Oh, we've never done this before, so having fun today. We've learned all sorts of stuff on this job, like every job. And we have a really cool pull box and lots of wire. And somebody that's done it before, that always helps. Yeah, I'm watching the way. That's how. Alright, we've got our ground. We've got our two hots and a neutral. Okay, get up here, channel up someone. I got some in my truck. Hold this right here. Yeah. No rocks in the pipes, right? No rocks in the pipes. Probably gonna put what? What do you think? One guy up there for relaying because that generator? Okay. Uh, one guy in the corner. Walkies, huh? Okay, so hand uh, hey, Hold this tight. Electrician trolls are going to come out and say, That's not the way you tape up wire. Well, then let them pull it. Yeah. <laughs> this is what that's what the do. trolls come up. One time I was on a big job, and that's all they argued about the whole time. The way to pull wire? That's not the way you, you tape it the up. the best? It'll come loose that way. If you don't have a good person feeding, mm -hmm. pulling's the worst. Did you use any lube? Yeah, did you get some lube? Yeah. Where did I put it? Keep that tight, Bubba. I got some foam kind. End of day four. Panels are on except for the one spot where just some DIN rail junction boxes. Uh, we need one more part and then that will be complete. And we've run our, all our wires. That was the biggest task today was to get the wires run. And that took a long time. So end of day four. We're tracking pretty good. We got an inspection tomorrow afternoon, so it'll be a full five days. But uh, no major flaws or glitches, and everybody's worked really well. So, you need one of these systems, just let us know. All right, beginning of the last day of this job, we hope. We're gonna do a little straightening up of the solar panels. All 60 of them are on the roof. We've got a backfill, clean up all our 600 feet of trench, and uh, get this all place cleaned up. Always fun. And then bring down, the solar's coming down in three strings to three SMA transformerless inverters. Okay, so I have this grinder connected to the secure power supply outlet of the SMA inverter. It gives 16 amps at 120 volts, which is about 2,000 watts. Sun's shining right now, so I'm just going to show you. No batteries. Woo! DC direct, running off the sun. Don't get no better than that. That, that is really awesome. Awesome. I want to see if it, 
The sun started that. Direct drive. Thank you, SMA. Yeah, I don't see the clock is out here. It shows it. You want, want to hit it? Yeah. Go, you Just tell me, what, tell me when you want me to start it. All right, All right do it. Oh, dude, it tells you the watts. Whoa. Listen to that. So, 578 watts. watts. Takes a minute to tell you. And that is awesome. It's, it's definitely surged more than that. So can we see that? Drop down to 177, no load. I bet you the startup on that, you've got a, that's a big grinder. Probably more than that. Startup's probably like 1500. All right, cool. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. Man, how about them apples? How about them apples? No batteries, folks. And you can do these on the new SMA inverters. You've been able to do them for a while, but this is uh, just a cool feature. The new ones have more, 50, 500 watts more. 2,000 watts, 500 watts more than the old style. So no batteries to run a secure load. We, we're going to give them 6,000 watts when the sun is shining and no power. Like they just gone through Hurricane Matthew and they do not have power. They haven't had it all week. Well, it's really awesome. But now they do. Uh, something that's really awesome is that this inverter, I didn't, it's never seen 240 utility grid. It probably got tested at the factory, but I have not commissioned this inverter. I just turned on, hooked the solar up, turned on the DC uh, switch and jumper to uh, secure power supply together and boom, I got power. So this is something you could probably throw in a Faraday cage and just hook it up to yeah, panels. So, hook it up and you got so, you, so there will be a switch. Where are we going to put the switch for each it's one? It's going to be like a toggle. little toggle here? switch yes. down here. And the inverters are on. SMA 6000s, each one of them. And you see the blinking green LED. That's the SBS secure load is available because the power is still out here after Hurricane Matthew. And we have the AC combiner on the right hand side. So these three inverters through our wiring troughs feed this AC combiner then they go 600 plus feet over to the house where they'll be uh, net metered, grid tied. Hopefully in the future they might add a sunny island or something comparable so when the grid goes down they actually have a battery backup system. All right, it's time to go home. We got a four hour drive. And we're out of here. Any last words, boss? Praise the Lord. Hey, man. Praise the Lord. Happy with it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Another fine job by the crew. Had a lot of good help this week, and uh, we had a lot more digging than we thought we were going to have to do. But it was, uh, anyway, came out really nice, and customer is very happy. So that's all that matters. Signing off, Engineer 775.